In other words, I'm not just asking you to trust in my ability to lead this country. But I'm also asking you to trust in yourselves. I'm asking you to trust in the capacity of millions of voices to bring about change. That's how change has always happened. And especially the change that has been brought about because the voices of a new generation, the voices of young people, like the ones in this audience today, stand up and say, we want something new. We don't accept the old. We don't accept slavery. We don't accept segregation. We don't accept women having the right to vote. Not the right to vote. We don't accept workers not having, we don't, we don't accept workers not having the right to organize. We, we don't believe just in the world as it is, we demand the world as it should be. And because of that, because of all these voices coming together, that's how change came about. That's how we brought an end to slavery. That's how we brought an end to Jim Crow. That's how women won the right to vote. That's how the environmental movement started. That's how we brought an end to the Vietnam War. That's how we'll bring an end to the Iraq War. Because all of you make a decision. Now, if you believe that, if you believe that all of us are called, not just me, but all of us are called to fight for that new vision of America, then after this rally, it's not enough just to say, well, that was a fun rally. <laughs> I need all of you to get involved. You've got to recruit people to get involved. You've got to, you've got to get on the website and email everybody you know. You've got, to, you, you've got to volunteer for this campaign. You've got to help get organized not just here in Wisconsin, but wherever it is that many of you and the students are from. And if you do that, then I'm absolutely convinced that we are not just going to win an election, but we'll transform the country. And, and if you doubt that, if you doubt that, let me just end with one story that gives you a sense of the power of one voice. I was down in South Carolina, which is an early state, like Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina. We spent a lot of time there because those are where the first caucuses and primaries are being held. And I was at a legislative banquet, and I was sitting next to a state representative down there, and I wanted that state rep's endorsement, that state rep's support. And so I turned to the state rep and I said, state rep, I want your endorsement. <laughs> and she said, she looked at me, she said, Obama, I will give you my endorsement if you come to my hometown of Greenwood, South Carolina. And I almost had a glass of wine or something, because right away, I said, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> Turns out that Greenwood is an hour and a half from every place else. <laughs> so, a month later, I fly into South Carolina. I've been campaigning for two weeks, every single day, 16-hour days, I'm beat. I get into the hotel about midnight, staggering into my hotel room, and my staff says, uh, Senator, you've got to be in the car at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. I said, what? They said, yes. I said, why is that? Well, we've got to go to Greenwood like you promised. So the next morning, I drag myself out of bed. I, I'm, I'm still feeling awful. And, and I, I open up the drapes in the hotel room, and it's pouring down rain. It's a miserable day. And I get a cup of coffee. I, I open up the newspaper. And there's a bad story about me in the New York Times. And then I, then I go outside to, before I get in the car, my umbrella blows open and I get soaking wet. So I get in the car now and I'm, I'm sleepy, I'm wet, and I'm mad. <laughs> but we start driving out to Greenwood and we drive and we drive and we drive and we drive. It seems like it's taking forever to get there. And finally, we get to Greenwood. Except you don't know right away that you're in Greenwood because there's a lot of fields around there. And there's a little park and we pull alongside this building and, uh-oh. We, we need one more. We need one more paramedic. Is there somebody back there? Right over here. We should have had this outside. We weren't expecting this, this much heat. Global warming. This is too cold. 
I don't think it's too cold. All right. Okay, they're coming right through here. They're, it's right over here, sir. Right down here. All right. So, the, the paramedics are ready. She's going to be fun. She's going to be fun. Yeah. She's the third. Time to charge. And she, well, they all get bonuses. Hi, she's waiting at me. She looks, she had a really nice smile, so she's okay. All right, so, so I get to Greenwood. And I walk in, I've been driving for an hour and a half, and lo and behold, there are only 20 people there. After an hour and a half drive. And they all look kind of damp. I'm kind of sleepy, like maybe they weren't that happy to see me either. <laughs> but I'm running for president, so 20 voters, you know, you gotta go after them. So I'm shaking hands, how do you do, what do you do, I want you to vote for me. They're shaking my hand, nodding. Suddenly, behind, behind me, I hear this voice. Pilot! And I'm sort of startled. But the other 20 people, they all just say, fire it up. And then we hear the voice say, ready to go! And the other 20 people, they act like this is just the most normal thing in the world. They all say, ready to go! So I'm confused. I, I look back, and there is this uh, little woman. She's about 5'3", uh, about 65 years old. She's got a church outfit on, got a big hat, big glasses. She smiles right at me. She says, fire it Turns out that she's a city councilwoman from Greenwood, South Carolina, who is famous for her chant. She does this chant, she's been doing this chant for years. And so, for the next five minutes, she just keeps on repeating this chant over and over again. She says, fire it up. Everybody says, fire it up. She says, ready to go. Everybody says, ready to go. And, you know, so it's kind of wild, so I can't really campaign in there. So I'm just standing there and I'm looking at my staff and I'm shrugging their shoulders. But here's the thing, Madison. After about a minute or two, I'm feeling kind of fun. I feel like I'm ready to go. So I start joining in the chain. And for the rest of the day, even after we left Greenwood, Every time I saw my staff, I said, are you fired up? And they'd say, I'm fired up, boss. You fired up? I, I, you ready to go? I'd say, yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> and it just goes to show you how one voice can change a room. And if one voice can change a room, then it can change a city. And if it can change a city, then it can change a state. And if it can change a state, then it can change a country.